So it looks like today is one of those days where it can be a little bit challenging. You came through the website. Okay, interesting. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, we have a new website in case anybody didn't know. Uh, humandesign.live is where I set up this um, event. It's a recurring event. So I'm calling it Sunday Sessions. And on Sundays I do teach. So I will have to uh, leave after I finish looking through the transits, can't stay around and talk story. But I wanted to have a regular time and space to look at the current uh, transits. And let me actually get rid of logged in. I'm logged into the um, group. Hang on. So that I don't hear the dinging. I get a I get a bell notification every time somebody wants to join the group. And I think we have like another hundred people that want to join and it's really overwhelming the amount of interest in people um, leaving Facebook and getting onto a new platform. So I created this um, place based on an invitation from a reflector who's using it, a platform where we can get together as kind of our own social media space where we don't have to listen to the clutter and the noise of Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, or all that stuff. I'm planning on pulling out of that personally because I find it overwhelming right now, especially with um, so many messages. I can't keep up with my messages. I apologize if you've messaged me. Daria, I know you've messaged me several times and I haven't been able to get energy or clarity to reply. So much has changed in our lives right now. And, and have you noticed that, you know, a lot of new things coming to the forefront? We had that grand conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in Gate 60 on the winter solstice. And we have this channel of m mutation, yeah, this energy that gives us innovation. And what I'd like to do is a little bit innovate with the way that I do my classes and structure my teaching. So instead of doing a deep transit report at the beginning of class, I'm inconsistent, I'm non-sacral, don't have gate 15. So I don't usually go like really deep into transit reports. And I kind of miss that. I like doing more of an a comprehensive look at what's happening. And so that's what I'd like to do with my Sunday mornings as I have my morning drink and get ready for the day. Take a look at the transits with you, my fractal family, and just be prepared for what's to come this week. And then that way, when I teach my classes, I can just briefly say, here's the transit report for today. It's a fifth line day, blah, blah, blah. And then go into our classes rather than spending, because I teach um, sometimes five to eight classes per week. If I can cut down that much time <laughs> of talking, it would be good on my throat. So I'm just going to do one transit report per week and you're all invited. And that's what this is all about. So to kick off our inaugural uh, event of, you know, unleashing the humandesign.live website, I did not realize it was going to be a fifth line day, which is my favorite day to teach, and also the left angle cross of individualism. I just didn't look at the transits, quite frankly. I looked at my design, um, what I can handle and um, on my calendar, and what I'd like to give back to my community and connect with you. So anyway, this is what we're going to do from now on, hopefully, as long as I'm not sick personally, I'd like to hold this regular space for you all. So. Yeah, we're not doing cameras. Um, personally, I can't stream without having a degrading of my network because I live now. I bought a house. So one more little brief connection, personal connection to those of you on my fractal. This year, my husband and I bought a house and it has been the most successful year of my life. Oh, I wish I could tell you how much, but I feel embarrassed, quite frankly, with how much people are struggling. But suffice it to say, very successful this year, the most successful of my life. And I have been very successful over the years of teaching human design, but nothing like this year. And that's why I'm creating this platform. And hopefully it will become its own application, you know, phone app, so that you can stay connected with your friends, your fractal family. For me personally, to stay connected with my students like you guys and to be able to stay in touch without having to deal with the homogenized world is what I'm personally excited about. So that's what the, the new group, humandesign.live, is about. And uh, so we bought a, a ranch house, a, a farmhouse, you could say, on um, three acres out in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, kind of far from a big city, about a, um, almost two hours 
from a significant hour and 45 minutes from a significant city. And we're on well water. We have solar. We're still on grid. I would like to get off grid at some point, but we're preparing for these changing times that we're in. You know, it's really important that you take care of your uh, security. I know for me personally, security is a really important thing as part of, far as what's going on deep below in my body graph, in my design. And so to be able to empower you with the knowledge of what human design can do for you is the reason that I've come forth, <laughs> you know, from my hermit-like environment on the second line nodal environment to be able to share with you what a difference it's made in my life and what a difference um, I've seen in the lives of my students and the people that I serve because I am here to serve you on the gate 21 line three and in order to empower my community to have a space and a place for where people like us do things like this people like a uh, mind fractal that are my students that are just maybe even just followers on you know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, those all those platforms have become quite huge for me as far as following is concerned. And I'd like to pull us away from those platforms because what I've seen, we just moved out of gate 45 and 26 in line four. We've just shifted. And what I saw when the 26 was in line four, censorship was quite frankly appalling. It was really uncomfortable to see how locked down on the narrative of what we're supposed to think and see and how we're supposed to behave, particularly in this country, if you guys don't keep up with politics. Politics is my distraction. It's not my personal way of seeing. So what I wanted to provide is a safe space where people can live their experiment. I would like to have it be a place where people don't, you know, um, come into it brand new and start to teach. You know, if you don't have a certification, if you don't have a, any kind of professional background, please don't try to analyze other people's charts. What it really is, this new environment, is a place to share your own personal experiment with human design. So that's what I'd like to provide as a giving back to my community. And in support of all of this, the innovation of how we do things is, I'm not asking you for money for any of the free content that I create on this platform. There are going to be courses eventually that will be offered and they're same as in alignment with, you know, my human design work, living your design, ABCs, cartography, living your design guide, and now analyst training. But what I'd like to do is provide us a, a Sunday morning session where we come together and you guys are welcome to communicate uh, with each other throughout the week about what I'm providing to you. Because what I'm going to provide to you is a snapshot of what you're going to come across in this week. And what Ra said as far as transit reports are concerned is that the most important education you can have in human design, and it's absolutely and utterly free, is to experience, and I'm paraphrasing because I can never say exactly what he says unless I put it in quotes for you. I'll say quote if I can remember exactly what is said, like, love yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I can remember that one. But when it comes to what the transits are doing to you, all of you are going to experience this energy differently. All of you are going to see things differently. You're all going to feel things differently. But when we come to the thematics of the day, the line quality, again, 70% of what the energy is that is streaming from the sun and grounded in the earth, all of those neutrinos that are bombarding all of us right now is that sun earth. So that's where I'll pay the most attention. And then if we have any global conditioning patterns, so I'm going to speak a lot about what this channel means and particularly in relationship to what the sun and earth mean in this body graph and then you take that and you experiment with it for the week i might you know skip through depends on how deeply i get into the sunday transit i might skip through looking forward just a bit to know so to help you get a, a taste for what's to come 
But I want you guys to experiment with this. And if you can, share with us in the group. I'm not sure how or where. <laughs> I might just put up a, um, a topic called transits. And then if you could just tag your post with the topic transits as far as relating it to how you experience this energy in your life. So all I'm going to do basically every Sunday is read this graph for you as if it was a person, but a person in interaction with you and your design. So I'll do my best to try and put it in layman's terms because we have people from all walks of life and all levels of the knowledge that have signed up for this um, new place, this new space. And I feel really honored that that many people would have that kind of a response so quickly. So here we go. Let's talk about what's going on in the transit today. In a fifth line day, it is a fabulous day for sending a message to strangers. Remember how I said fifth line days are my favorite to teach? It's because not only am I a three five, so it adds emphasis to the nine fifth lines I already have in my design. But the fifth line in the ancient Ray of I Ching was considered to be an exalted line in that and in human design, rave I Ching. In human design, we look, all of us look to the fifth lines as our leaders as our messengers, as our saints, as our saviors, as our generals. So if you want to make a big splash on strangers, you know, a big impression, good first impression, if you want to get a message out into the world, you schedule that for a fifth line day. Again, I normally do that with brand new things, but I really didn't look this time. And I felt so happy that I'm sure somewhere in my, you know, our brains are so fabulous. They're so smart so intelligent our brain system not the mind <laughs> mind is great too sometimes um, for other things outside things but I'm sure that somewhere inside it just it was natural it was right to offer this to you on this day and so with this left angle cross of individualism what we're talking about is the root center where we have a lot of pressure and stress and these two gates are what feeds this channel this is one of the organizing channels of a group of individuals, the WA, the OC16, that creates our hum human energy field of being individual tribal freaks, <laughs> that individuals that tribe together. We tribe, human beings tribe, have you noticed? We tend to gravitate to people of like frequency. So when we're looking at this design, what I would say to you is that if you have a 28, hi, that's me. If you have a 55, if you have the 22 or the 12 or the 57, 20, what I want you to understand is that your energy field, your life force, your frequency, when you are in a group of people, feeds into this channel. The 60 and the 3 creates the channel of mutation. This is a design that fluctuates, this energy that fluctuates and initiates. It's a pulse. It's off and it's on. This person is the person that is in charge for innovating in a large group environment. So what does this mean across the board globally? It means we're being imprinted to mutate. And in fact, Mars is about mutation. Mars mutates us. It's our, in our personal design, it's immature energy dynamics. When it comes to what it does to us globally, right here, right now, difficulty at the beginning, the gate of ordering. And what that energy is doing is it's changing us cellularly from our DNA inside out. This channel brings an energy that gives us the power to keep up with the times and in fact eclipse them. Meaning this is something that comes, comes forth that is absolutely and utterly new. Third lines. Hi, I'm a third line. Love this. Third lines love new and improved. Look at how many third lines we've got in today's energy. Our nodal environment has shifted from fourth line censorship. Yeah past going from past to future into and I apologize if you I hope you can hear me it says my internet connection is unstable into an energy that is about change third lines love change they love new and improved they love figuring out what 
does work after experimenting with what does not work. So Mars, this energy, this powerful planet, this planet that is kind of combative. You know, if I, if I shift the, the body graph for you a little bit, showing you the rave mandala, take a look at where is gate three in the body graph in the mandala wheel. It's here in Aries. So we have Mars, which is a planet that is very combative. Think like a young bull, think like uh, a young teenager. Here in gate three, which is an individual gates, you know, individual gates are very stubborn. Just look at 38, just look at um, 39, you know, very stubborn and provocative, a lot of energy to, to get something new off the ground is what's happening right now. And if you look around at our society, we have so much that is shifting quite rapidly. If you don't keep up with the news as far as um, cryptocurrencies and finances and fiat, they call it um, fiat for regular cash and coin, you'll know that some countries are actually shifting over completely to a digital society. I think it was Venezuela that announced that recently. And not to um, scare you, but this is, is what is happening over here in the United States as well. It's just that most of the people on the planet don't know it yet. And I'm here to tell you, I know that this is huge. Something big is coming and this is part of it. We need to innovate, otherwise we die out. As a human species, if you do not change, if you do not develop something new out of the ashes of the old, we die. If you were to rip out all of these individual channels in the body graph, we as a human species would die. And so what's happening to us right now is that we are being empowered in a new direction. We have to get it off on the ground floor though. So what do you do if you need to get something new to come out into the forefront? You have to make it so that the old is weak and decaying and p potentially destroyed. We have to overlay on top of the old something that is new. And that, my friends, is cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Please don't take anything that I say um, and go off and invest in Bitcoin. Quite frankly, I would like you to stay away from Bitcoin. And I have lots of reasons for why that is. But I'm not going to go into that because I want to just plant a seed in you to empower you in a new direction. I'm a gate 14. So where does this energy go? It goes into me. I've got it in my sun and in my own Mars. Spirituality is the key to success. That's what my Mars says. Innate dignity, my, my personality or my design sun. And so all this energy is feeding into me and I am sharing with you a message. I'm a, I'm a 14, five and you're on my fractal and there's so much. I wish I could communicate with you as far as what's going on in our society. Just know that take whatever it is that I say and run it against your own authority. Always. Yeah, because I'm not your authority. You are. I'm a mouthpiece. I'm a spokesperson. Eight, eight, one. And what I share with you is something that I know that's big that's coming. My Jupiter, gate 23. So I just want you guys to know something very, very big is happening and it's time to wake up from the dream of the homogenized world that, of course, when we take a look at what our old life uh, global cycles is, it's about the, you know, financial system taking care of us, the governments, and we know that's not working. It's not. And what we're moving into is the cross of the sleeping phoenix where we're all designed to do our own thing go our own way be empowered and if you aren't your own authority you will not be empowered because you're still relying on the government to tell you what to do when the shit hits the fan and everything breaks down what are you going to do when the internet doesn't work what are you going to do when oh my goodness i'm getting heavy on you sorry <laughs> what are you going to do yeah, we, all we can do is follow our authority moment by moment and the door is closing. We have less than seven years. We have six years now and some change before this new cycle comes in. And the phoenix, it burns. It goes up in smoke and ashes before it rises from those ashes. And that's what our society is doing. 
So back to, <laughs> that's my, my little bits for today. Um, America is about to break out into a lot of heavy um, political chaos. It already is. Yeah, it already is. So I want you guys to be prepared by just knowing that there's something very big on the horizon and it's time to wake up, time to discover your own truth, do your best to follow your decision making strategy. So that's my message. Now I'm going to shift into analyzing this body graph from the perspective of if you have this, then look out for that. And I could speak so many different ways about this, but I'm going to focus on the gate activations that are on the other side of the transit so that you have something tangible to look at in your body graph, okay? So first things first, with this energy, if you do not have a sacral center defined, watch for spontaneous decisions, especially if you're emotional or you're a mental projector. Do not make emotional uh, do not make spontaneous decisions if you need time to talk it out or to sleep on it. Because what this transit will do is make you think, if you're undefined in the root center, that there, you're under a lot of pressure and stress and that you have to act now, that you can't afford to wait. So if you have gate 55, anytime you see 39 in the design uh, of the transit, you have gate 55. and of especially seeing this channel right here, you're going to find, hi, or if you have the 28 on the other side, you're going to find that there's a lot more moodiness, 55, a lot more melancholy, this whole stream of individuality, a lot more potential sadness and depression. I want you to rephrase the term depression. Saturn might be, have given you a lot of depression lately. Yeah, and anytime the third gate comes in, this time it's coming from Mars. If you are feeling depressed, I want you to reframe that word into deep rest. Your body is needing deep rest. And why is that? Because it's going through a profound mutation. Mutation takes energy. Your body moves in spurts as far as shifts and how it changes internally. Mutation is not something that happens. Yes, it does over time, slowly. But when it comes to in our body graphs, in our human design, mutation is speaking to us. It happens suddenly, like light years, quickly, so quick. But what is, it ha what is happening in the meantime? Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. I'm depressed. I feel sad. I feel moody. I feel melancholic. What's wrong with me? Why am I so blah, blah, blah? Stubborn, people might say. Why am I so provocative? And when I say I, I want you to reframe the I. Whenever I say I, why am I? I is what the mind thinks with. From childhood, you were conditioned to think that that I that is talking inside of your head about yourself is you. Quite frankly, all it is, is nothing to do with you, I, the I inside of your head about yourself. That I cannot be trusted. So when I speak from the I and I point at gates that are defined, that is what the conditioning of the transit is going to lead you to think. So let's pull out bigger picture. I don't have enough time to wait. I have to hurry up and get this done now. I'm under a lot of pressure and stress and I need to take care of this, do it now, all by myself. In fact, I only not need to take care of this by myself. I can't afford to ask for help. I have to also take care of you as well because I am responsible. Please don't take on responsibility unless you've got a gate 50 in a defined state and your authority says yes. And that person's recognized you, asked you, invited you, yada, yada. Because when you have a gate 50 now that's in an undefined state, what happens with this transit makes you think, oh, I got to kick too. I got to do it now. I have to hurry up. I have to take care of my tribe and it's my responsibility. And if that gate 50 is in an undefined state, you cannot trust the eye that speaks inside of your head about yourself. The reason why we have decision-making strategies, our strategy and authority, is because that is derived from the definition and the design, which is the only thing that you can trust. This in the transit is not trustworthy. However, all of us are susceptible to being bombarded by this energy. All of us are 
are helplessly, choicelessly experiencing this. So what do you do instead of thinking that you have to be responsible or that you have to, this is now you found your purpose and now you found your passion and now you've got a new desire, daydream fantasy for something new to happen and you've got all of this coursing energy either moving through you or not because this is a pulse that is off and on, like an off and on switch inside of your body. Everybody's going to experience it differently. What do you do? You sink back and surrender to this vehicle, this form, this body that is experiencing life and the eye that speaks inside of your head about yourself, wherever there is openness in the design, you question every thought. Do not believe. I think this, therefore I must do that because look, my friends, I think I know, and I believe they are not connected to energy. Energy is what fuels our movement, our willpower, our emotional system, our energy resource, our emotional intelligence, and our um, drive and stamina. Those are motors. Those are what fuel activity. I think, I am, and I believe are mental blah, blah, blah. They are not for making a decision unless you happen to be a mental projector with all of this defined, one, one, two, or all three, and you are speaking your process out for discussion with other people and you get a sudden sense of clarity or knowing or certainty. That's the only time you listen to that voice coming out of your mouth to make a decision. Quite frankly, I don't believe what people say anymore. All I believe is seeing what their actions are. So the mental blah, blah, blah of I think, I know, I believe, I don't even believe it from my own mouth unless I'm feeling it in my body because that is the only thing that's trustworthy. Your body is your reality. Your body is built around your chemistry, which is built around your frequency. I'm going to shift over now for a moment here and show you my body, my design. All I have for my body, my, my own truth, is an energy frequency that speaks and that teaches. I'm a teacher. Gate 8, line 5 is a teacher. I have the ability to speak when inspired with clarity, with, clar with objectivity. And I have this energy that when inspired goes my own way, does my own thing. And all I can do to you is do my best to explain it. My Chiron return is a cross of explanation. So I, attend, I end up explaining things a lot. And it's fun to hear this body speak when I actually have no clue what's coming out of my mouth. I have no idea what I'm going to say, what I'm going to communicate. Right now with the transits, I've got the channel of the transmitter. You know, I've got, I've got the channel of money. I've got so many things going on from day to day that moves through me. And yet the only thing that is consistent in my mind's process is my imagination. In my body's process is my direction. Because the G center is about love and direction. This is a direction gate. Gate one is a direction gate. I am driven to a new direction. So that's why I explain to you what I'm doing, where I've, where I've been and where I'm going, where I am, because that's the only way I can lead through example. So telling you about my house is not to brag. It's telling you, this is what we've done. We've, we've pulled ourselves as much as possible away from the big cities into a place where if we needed to, we could raise animals and we could have a garden. Because if the shit hits the fan, we want to be self-sustained. That is really, really, really important, my friends. It's really important. And if you don't have the money, the success, to be able to have that experience for yourself, I know uh, some of you have. You've told me about it because, you know, in classes and such. But the vast majority do not. What do you do in that case? You follow your decision-making strategy because that will take you to where you need to be. What Ra, well, I'm uh, paraphrasing again, what Ra said is that the people who are back to the land people really have, um, they have a hold on something in that 
it's going to be very challenging for our societies to survive healthfully moving forward in these big cities because it's not sustainable. And if you look around at what's going on um, with the rioting and the chaos that has ensued, particularly over here, we've had a lot of, um, you know, close, closing downs of our society to where we can't even make a living. Eight million people out of jobs, you know, home, um, uh, unemployed, I believe, the last time I checked. I haven't checked in a bit. But it's important that you know they're doing this on purpose as far as they need to shift us out of our complacency to what's, you know, not working anymore and empower us in a new direction and they've been doing this to try and, and shepherd us if you will but also retain power and that's not going to work for you and me my friends for you because you are going to be your own authority you are going to find yourself in the right place and the right time to be able to face any challenges I'm not going to say that it's easy or pretty but those challenges are going to be the right ones for you so that you can survive and live the life that you were born to live if you can follow your body. Your body is trustworthy. Follow your body no matter what. Whatever your authority happens to be, whatever authority happens to be yours, you follow that. You will find yourself in the right place at the right time. Okay? I just kind of highlighted there's seven different authorities basically. So back to our transit report. I told you a brief overview of what's happening down here and how you might feel it in your body, if, especially if you're undefined or if you have gate activations on the other side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what's going on in the rest of these centers, okay? And I'm going to begin at the top here because Pluto has been here off and on because it goes retrograde since last year it went into gate 61 line one pluto is death and rebirth it's our truth transformation and psychology it is what we learn from the transit what is mm, mutating what's shifting because every time pluto goes through a gate it mutates that gate our inner truth is being mutated as we speak my personal design my moon, my conscious moon, I'll just shift over to that for a moment here. Whoops. Shift over to my conscious moon to show you what's going on here personally. I am a totally different person than who I was two years ago. Not only because of the human design experiment, but because Pluto has been going over my natal moon. This doesn't happen all the time because Pluto takes 247 years 247.68 years to go around the mandala wheel. So when Pluto goes over something in your design, it really mutates that. It's been mutating my mind. It's been mutating my awareness. It's been mutating the perspective I have on my own inner truth and the truth that I see in the world around me, particularly in the world of my tribe, my people, my friends, my family, you, my students. So as I look to this gate 61, where Pluto is hanging out, in the head center. What I know to be true is that if you have 24 on the other side, this gate that gives you a fear of ignorance, Pluto is mutating your awareness to help you find your own inner truth. Do not be misdirected by a truth outside of yourself. Truth cannot be given to you by anyone out, outside of yourself. That's something you can't buy, just like love. Can't buy love, can't buy truth, can't buy inner truth. Truth is individual. Truth is unique. Truth is empowering. And truth must be loved by you in order for it to be true. Do you love yourself yet? Have you experienced the awakening of loving yourself no matter what your mind says are your problems and your, you know, wrongdoings and whatever it is that you don't like about your voice or you're not good enough because you don't make enough money or you're not healthy enough and on and on and on. Oh, I avoid confrontation, therefore I'm not good enough. All the kind of bullshit lies your mind can tell you. 
Your truth comes from within. It comes from within your body. That's why Ra gave us decision-making strategies, your type strategy and your authority to help you discover your own inner truth. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. You find that truth inside of you because you were born for this. It's there. It's there already. All you have to do is uncover, wake up from the bullshit lies your eye mind inside of your head about yourself says that you misidentify with as truth and as true and as you. That is not who you are, that voice. It's not. I'm going to give you one of the tips that my teacher, uh, one of my teachers, Marianne Winnegar, 6'2", left angle cross of the alpha, you know, somebody who's here to preserve and protect and transform and lead. She says in her uh, training for LYD guides, something I, she gave me permission to give to my own um, guides, a lecture piece. She said, if you can do this, this one thing, and I'm paraphrasing because I can never remember exactly what somebody said, but here's my take on it. If you can do this one thing, I'm going to give you a tool that will serve you the rest of your life that I give to all my guide teacher trainers and all my LYD students. When you hear the I inside of your head about yourself, I want you to shift it to instead of saying I, do your best to remember to say my mind thinks and shift your perspective over into the body. What is your body telling you? What is your body feeling? If you can question that I and not believe what it says, because the body doesn't lie. Only the mind does. And when you use your mind to make a decision, you are automatically lying, not only to yourself, but to the world around you. So I don't care what you're telling me. I don't care what you think or know you believe. If that is not your authority, if you're not a mental projector with that channel, I don't care. What I do care is that you believe your body that you sink into that sweet sadness if that is what your body is telling you and you surrender to the fact that you have no choice, that this is, is what it is. You can surrender to that feeling. And just like, you know, in order for us to have rainbows, what do we need? We need sunshine and we need rain. We do not have life if we do not have rain. We do not have mutation if we do not have deep rest. And sometimes that shows up as depression. So if you feel sad, if you feel frustrated, if you feel stuck, know too that this too shall pass, that this is not forever, that your mutation doesn't last. It happens. It's there or it's not. It happens in spurts. And in these days, these dark days that are ahead, when you have, you know, the rain pouring down and you feel sad inside of your body, Go home to the truth. What is your body feeling? And honor that. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be moody. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay to be antisocial. Hi. I'm a very antisocial person. You wouldn't guess it from my teachings, but I really do not like socializing. <laughs> For the first time, somebody, one of my students came and visited me this week. Uh, one of my LOID guide students. I was so excited to meet her. And we met in a coffee, or a, not a coffee shop, but a juice bar. And one of her um, people that she knows, friends, walked over and said, oh, hi, you know, wanted to meet. Oh, come on over. And for the first time, I heard myself saying, now I have social anxiety, just to kind of say no, <laughs> just to push it off, not to explain, well, let me sleep on it. You know, no, I actually really do. I have social anxiety. I really don't like being in groups of people. That's not comfortable. I'm a projector. I'm here for very small groups of people for short periods of time. But guess what? I'm moving on from Pluto, by the way. <laughs> so trying to find what's inspiring and, you know, try to answer everybody else's questions. Well, don't, don't worry. <laughs> that too shall pass. Let's move on to what Neptune will do. Neptune is misinformation. It's part of what you know, gives us our heart, so to speak, of our psychology. Misinformation, illusion, and art and truth, that's what Neptune stands for. Sometimes it's psychic some phenomena, sometimes it's, you know, things that 
are hidden. What's hidden? It's what's hidden. And here we have the gate of grace being part of what creates the channel of openness, a design of a social or antisocial being. So who knows? Maybe he had the 12. And maybe I was just all of a sudden, boom, telling you my truth. I'm antisocial. Not interested. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, not sorry. Didn't say sorry. Just nope. No, thank you. You know, because that's what's true for me. And I can honor and stand up for my truth that I am not a social being. And I used to force myself to do that back in the day before I woke up and realized how unhealthy that was. So what happens if you've got the 12 and you don't have the 22? If you've got an undefined throat, you've got an undefined emotional system. Now what's happening is you have the expression, you as a 12, have the expression of the stream of moodiness, emoting. And so you might find yourself, hey, I do want to be a social butterfly now or not. Second lines are more hermit-like. So if you feel like you have to blurt, no, I can try this now, says the 12. The 12 says, I know I can try. I'm in the mood to try. If you go spontaneously, oh, I can do this now. I can try this now. And you're not a spontaneous person. Be careful. Just watch. What is your body saying? What is your mouth saying is not the same as what your body is telling you. Oftentimes, when you say something with your mouth that your body doesn't believe, your body reacts negatively. I wish I'd understood this back in the day before I, um, when I was experimenting, new to my experiment in the human design system. If I'd have known that the thoughts inside of my, my head, the I, what my body reacted to negatively was always it went into disempowerment. So I want you to, to pay attention. When you say something that comes out of your mouth and your body reacts negatively, I'm not good enough, nobody loves me. Body says, ooh, I'm disempowered. Body reacts with disempowerment. That is a body truth. That is something to pay attention to. Your awareness is everything. Your awareness is the only thing you have. You as in the personality structure that is witnessing this life. When I say, <laughs> and actually there's two yous. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> but when we look at the body graph, there's an I that thinks inside of the head about itself that is the conditioning that is spoken by all of these open centers, open channels, okay? So there's that I, the I, Lavina's I before she became awake and aware in human design, thought she had to experience everything for herself, was terribly bored with doing anything the same way or you know, going to the same restaurants or seeing, the, had to have always new, new, new experiences, had to have them all, had to make all the dreams come true. Oh my God, was that a nightmare? That was devastating to me as a not self individual. So now when I say I, when I say the little I, I'm talking to conditioning. When I call you as in you, as in the you that was you before time was time, the personality witness consciousness, I always tend to point to this space uh, in the rave calculations on the right hand side that I'm speaking to the witness. It's not this that is you, this conscious aspect of you that you think with, therefore you think it is you. That is not who you are. When I say you as in the eternal nature of you, your soul, I'm speaking to the passenger consciousness that resides here just under the scalp, not even fully incarnate into the body according to human design. The thing that was born and will be born again and again and again, that has been born again and again and again, maybe not on this planet, but per definitely you have existed and you will continue to exist beyond this body. When I speak to the witness consciousness, I'm not speaking to just the I. The witness consciousness can only see, can see more than just what the mind sees, the conditioned thinking mind, what it sees. I hope that didn't confuse you. If you've been my student, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a student, then please feel free to discuss, open it up to discussion so I can clarify. So what I need you to do is to recognize that if you're not emotional and you've got a 30, sorry, a 55 
or a 12 or a 30 or a 37 and this center is undefined what you need to watch out for is running around hopped up on emotional moodiness sadness desires needs and feeling like you have to must should do something irrational because of your moods those moods that you feel are deeply conditioned by because my friends these gate activations are conditioning receptors if you've got it in an undefined state if you've got gate activations and your solar plexus is being turned on by the transits or turned on by a person now you are learning your life program is learning about emotional intelligence and you cannot trust the I that makes a decision because this is what I need this is what I'm in the mood for this is what I desire unless your strategy and authority has been activated somebody asks you you respond boom maybe it is right for you to socialize but you cannot trust the I that says I have to must should because of my feelings or my emotions body sensations are what create authority signposts for the most part even with those of you who have talking authorities okay so the talking authorities as far as what you say you have the will to do what you hear yourself share as a memory or you know a direction or where you're going or what you are the I am voice those are projector projected authorities those are all talking authorities the ego authority will say it has to I have the will I will and then the authority of the mental projector the I think I know I believe your talking authorities even those from my observations and feedback of teaching human design over these past since 2014 years is that I know you get a body sensation maybe it's a glow for you okay if you've got a defined G Center that's your authority maybe it's a shot of energy to be able to promise and prove and deliver and for the awareness of the mental projector I have heard that it can also become body sensations but it's a sudden you know sensation of your clarity of your thought processes your beliefs based on what your past certainties certainties about what the past means and how it makes sense and based upon what you think you are certain about as it moves into the future or based upon what you know all of that can be felt as a frequency within the body so no avoiding confrontation and truth hey confront when the truth is necessary yeah even when it's not popular stand up for you you do you believe in you your body it's alive it still has its purpose if you're still kicking my friends you still have your purpose to live and you can live that mercury is up here in the head center inspiration function with Pluto and so we're speaking from a place of being able to get in touch with their natural brilliance your natural essence your natural core your individual knowing you have this gate 61 even if you don't have it defined in the body graph even if it's just a gate hanging out there undefined this is technically speaking undefined even if it's not colored in you have a 61 you have your own inner truth and what I'm doing is attempting to my I can hear my voice persuading you in the recognition of your own truth you got an undefined heart center but the transit is bringing in 26 or 40 so you have maybe a 44 or a 37 and the transit is bringing in 45 maybe you have a 21 hi I've got the 44 and 21 boy has this last couple of months been interesting with the stuff that's coming out of my mouth as I hear I will I will I will and then I go you know what hang on <laughs> let me feel that out for a while guys I'm not perfect I'm just a few steps beyond where you're at and by engaging with you in this way 
the way that I teach now, which I saw shift in the last two and a half years, where I was very honest with where I'm at and how it feels to be me and what I see happening in my experiment. I don't have it all figured out. I'll never have it all figured out. I'm not designed to. But I can tell you for my, from my experience, what this is like is if you've got an undefined heart center like I do, and you have it turned on by the transits or a person, you need to watch out for, <laughs> I'm laughing at how intense my energy is right now, teaching with this energy, watch out for feeling like you're not good enough if you don't deliver on your promises, feeling like you have to be the best. Because I know that I experience that myself. I'm open here with the 26 and 40. I'm def I have an undefined 21. So I know that, you know, providing this place, this space for my tribe, my people, which I've dreamed about for years. The only th reason why this happened now that I have the financial security to engage and to have the, the courage to leave these big social media platforms and it is on the table as far as eventually just completely shutting down seven years at least of solid networking and working on um, you know engaging with people aligned with human design and, and building a, a structure of engagement with them on the social media platforms on Facebook on YouTube on Twitter it only happened now because it's time because somebody invited because enough of my people left it already to where I see my own husband left Facebook to where I see now I can Huh, I can do with this and I can't do it without you without your support without your engagement too in this new space because it's not going to be social if there's no one there to socialize with so what I'd like you to do is engage with the material I will do my best to provide guidance. See here I said, will do my best. That's the transits. <laughs> but that's me also talking. Me as in my body. This is my direction. I find myself doing it. I have energy for it. To simply spiel, as my husband would say, to talk to you from this place of unique personal seeing, my differentiated unique seeing, about what I know to be true from studying and teaching the human design system studying since 2012 and now engaging with you as a mentor as a guide as a teacher as an example that if you have an undefined G center I really want to put it to you particularly because I have a defined G center and here's what I know to be true about what happens in the engagement of a defined with an undefined I am not trying to lead you any specific place all I want to do is be an example of someone who knows where they're going from my personal perspective of what I know to be true about my own seeing, personal, and my own knowing, my experience of being somebody who can be inspirational when empowered. So don't follow me because I said to. Don't do strategy and authority because you know, you think you have to experiment with it for yourself and share with us how it's going. That's all I ask on this new platform. Experiment and share. Be empowered. I'm doing my best to give you an empowering place to come so that you can commune with your fellow people because that's what I want for me, my people, my tribe, my fractal family, my human design <laughs> co-conspirators. <laughs> co-experimenters yeah that's more like it so did my best um, they're always going to be about 55 minutes because I do need to go on to prepare for other classes for my day and I hope that this has been entertaining and helpful um, I guess the last piece I would leave you with is there's a lot of ideas that people have and this is where Venus is values and relating a lot of ideas that people have about what they believe to be true. Do your best to always question every thought and remember that you are your own authority. That you don't have to 
play nice. You don't have to promise. You don't have to be somebody, anybody other than exactly who you are in this time and in this place. That there, there may be a lot of fear because when anytime you see the totally open uh, splenic center, this is our fears for our survival. And if you've got a 28, a 44 right now, like I do, fear of not achieving your purpose before you die or fear of the past catching up with you and not having enough on the material plane to succeed, to make money. If that fear is bothering you, my friends, don't give up. Don't lose hope because fear, false evidence appearing real, hate to use that, but it's true. If you have an undefined splenic center, those fears are amplified and your mind will distort it and it will say, I have to so that I can ensure my own survival. And whatever the mind is saying I about and you're trying to convince and persuade other people about, question that thought, question every thought. The only thing that all of this has to do with you, all this transit stuff is, is that it's flowing through you right now. That's all it has to do with you. So the conditioning of the transits that we have no choice, we're helpless to experience because it's bombarding us every second of every day. All you can do is watch it with awareness to witness what is happening to your mind and to not give it the authority that you have given it for every day of your life since you were born. So looking at the week, this transit, this, uh, let's see, when is it going to move? Where did it? Oh, was that where it went? Sixty and three, sixty and three. It's going to be there. Whoop. There it is. And it, just until Monday. So you have a couple more days of this. You see that? Where we have Monday the 4th, we move into Saturn into gate 41. So you will have Jupiter and Saturn in 41 soon. So this innovation, this channel, this mutative energy, this sadness, this depression, don't worry. By Monday, this too shall pass. All right? And... Uh, Hopefully that helps you in engaging with the material for the week. Until next time, my friends, namaste. Much love to you. Bye for now.